The Lenape of the eastern woodlands have a long and rich history as hunters and gatherers. But did you know they were also farmers? The cultivation of plants and crops played a major role in all Native American life, including that of the Lenape. The ability to change a landscape, grow food, and preserve food into the coming seasons allowed the Lenape people to continue to thrive in an ever-changing living environment. During this section of our Lenape virtual lesson, we are going to be covering the topics of agriculture and the role that farming played in the lives of the Lenape people during the Eastern Woodlands time period. The two topics we'll be discussing during this lesson are the cultivation of wild edibles and the complex technologies necessary for companion planting during this time period. Early Dutch settlers reported a bounty of easily accessible edible and medicinal plants found alongside Lenape paths. This, of course, was not by accident. We can deduce that because for a long period of time, the Lenape mostly relied on small scale cultivation of their native plant species, that this observation by early Europeans is evidence that the Lenape had a deliberate understanding of protecting and cultivating natural resources for long-term use. Roughly a thousand years ago, some Lenape made the switch to the cultivation of three major food crops, corn, beans, and squash. As mentioned in our tools section, the Lenape use such items as bone, wood, and shells to harvest, manipulate, and grow crops. The Lenape lived in harmony with their region's environment and responsibly utilized what nature already had to offer. But as farmers, they needed to manipulate the landscape in order to produce food. As mentioned in the gathering portion of this virtual Lenape program, it was a responsibility of women and children to go into the forest to gather plants, roots, berries, fruits, mushrooms, and nuts. Most of this food was eaten as soon as it was harvested. Though during seasons when plants provided a surplus of goods, they could be dried and stored for the winter months ahead. In spring, there were wild blueberries, blackberries, and strawberries. The roots of cattails and other aquatic plants could be eaten, along with cranberries, wild plums, and persimmons. During the fall months, walnuts, beech nut, hickory, and chestnut were gathered. But how is it that the Lenape knew that an abundance of wild edibles would be readily available to them? Well, this came in the cultivation of wild plants. The definition of cultivation when it comes to plants is the act of caring or raising plants. In order to cultivate plants, the Lenape needed to manipulate the landscape the methods that were utilized to manipulate the landscape when it came to the cultivation of wild plants was mounding, weeding, and the use of fire. Mounding was using a soil to create a mini raised bed, just like we do in our gardens today at home. The soil was manipulated to assist in seed and plant germination, while the mounds themselves also acted as a weed barrier. These mounds could ensure that wild edibles were not only germinating and seeding, but were healthy and happy plants. Weeding, just like we do today, was used to make sure that plants that needed to be used would not be outcompeted by other plants and vegetation. Fire, which was probably the most multifaceted tool used by the Lenape, could flush game and clear forests but it also happened to eliminate plants that weren't evolved to withstand fire. An outcome that the Lenape found favorable to their nut trees. Once the Lenape discovered this bit of botanical knowledge, they used it to their stomach's content. Burning long tracts of land and forest gradually rid the land of unfavorable species, selecting only those that bore edible fruits and nuts for them to utilize throughout their seasons. During the Eastern Woodlands time period, the Lenape utilized three major crops in order to produce food for their people. 
These three companion plants, also known as the three sisters, comprise of corn, squash, and beans. Most often when we think about corn production today, we think about long rows of corn subsidized by nitrogen-rich fertilizer. Of course, hundreds of years ago, the Lenape didn't utilize such fertilizer. Instead, they depended on the basic characteristics of each companion plant to provide a whole cycle of food production and energy in order to create and produce and grow the food they needed. During the Eastern Woodlands time period, the Lenape put a lot of time, energy, and planning into growing the Three Sisters. This usually began in early spring when the Lenape men would go out and utilize the slash and burn method we mentioned earlier in this video to clear plots of land. After the land was prepped, the women and girls would go out and plant the first crop of the Three Sisters, and that was, you guessed it, corn. Corn being a grass is highly dependent on nitrogen-rich soil. So how is it that the Lenape were able to put nitrogen into the soil? Well, that brought us to our second crop, which were beans. Beans are able to pull nitrogen out of the atmosphere and put them down into the ground through their roots to feed their sister plant, corn. After our beans were planted, the third crop, squash, were planted in those same mounds. Squash is a large ground cover with broad leaves. These broad leaves were able to assist in keeping temperature fluctuations within the soil to the right degree in order for her other two sisters to grow. By having broad leaves that also trapped moisture in the ground, just like canopies can within a forest. It was the natural characteristics of each of these companion plants that allowed the Lenape people to utilize companion planting to provide a surplus of crops for their people.